Julius Sachs will always be associated with the development of plant physiology and what is known today as plant molecular biology and plant systems biology. Yet today his name goes largely unmentioned or unrecognized despite his prominence as a fastidious and exceptionally insightful scientist. Sachs trained a generation of plant physiologists and his stress on experimentation and mechanism influenced biologists in other disciplines, especially the embryologist Jacques Loeb, the British plant scientist Francis Darwin, and the Dutch botanist Hugo de Vries, and others too numerous to mention. In this video we describe the life and achievements of Julius Sachs with a focus on his Darwinian botanical perspective, as outlined in his Lehrbuch, published 150 years ago. Until around 1800, the university system in Germany was focused on the maintenance of established knowledge. In contrast, research in practical agricultural biology, etc., was carried out at so-called academies or colleges, having no link to the university system. Wilhelm von Humboldt, who founded the University of Berlin in 1809, was the first to argue that research and learning have to be unified. University professors should be researchers and academic teachers alike. Humboldt also proposed the principle of freedom of teaching and learning, and argued that science should never be influenced by religious or political dogma. This philosophical perspective had a profound influence on Sachs and the future of the German university system. Until around 1860, research into the practical aspects of the plant sciences was carried out at academies with the aim of improving crop productivity. Sachs changed the Stinkweise in ways that led to the founding of plant physiology as we know it today. The life of a creative scientist and artist, Ferdinand Gustav Julius Sachs was born in Breslau, Germany on the 2nd of October, 1832. He was the eighth of nine children, of whom five died before reaching adulthood. His poor but gifted parents, Maria Theresia and Christian Gottlieb Sachs, had both died by 1849, but not before his father had taught his talented son line drawing. Fortunately, Sachs was a friend of the children of Jan Evangelista Perkini a Czech physician, physiologist, and professor at the University of Breslau. Perkini appreciated Sachs's abilities and knew about his artistic skills, notably the inborn capacity of the 17-year-old orphan to draw natural objects with exquisite exactitude. In 1851, Perkini hired the then 19-year-old Sachs as an illustrator and personal assistant. Sachs lived in Perkini's house until 1856, despite some tension between a somewhat dominating mentor and a precocious and strong-willed pupil who rapidly developed his own profile as a prolific biologist. After enrolling at the University of Prague, Sachs studied physics, chemistry, mathematics, and biology. He earned a PhD from Prague University in 1856 based on 21 publications he had already produced. One year later, Sachs earned his habilitation in plant physiology and became the first lecturer of his newly created discipline. After short-term positions in Thurant and Chemnitz, he was hired in 1861 as a full-time academic at the Agricultural College in bonn Poppelsdorf, which was not affiliated with the nearby University of Bonn. In Poppelsdorf, Sachs married an Austrian woman with whom he had four children, three of whom survived into adulthood. In 1867, Sachs accepted the chair of botany at the University of Freiburg but due to a lack of suitable students, moved to become professor at the Botanical Institute of the University of Würzburg. Julia Sachs was an introverted, shy person who disregarded religion and political philosophical speculations without factual basis. He edited his own scientific journal and published, in addition to his six books, about 160 single-author articles. When the Deutsche Botanische Gesellschaft, the German Society for Plant Sciences, was founded in 1882, 
Sachs was invited to join, but refused to become a member. He attributed his lack of interest in social activities to hardship during his youth. When Sachs was around 50 years old, his wife was forced to live for the rest of her life in a mental hospital, so that he had to take care of his three teenage children as a single father. Sachs was a workaholic who spent most of his life in the Botanical Institute, busy with research, teaching, supervising postdocs, and handling administrative duties. Due to his high indigenously motivated workload, 14 to 15 hour days, heavy smoking, and a lack of exercise and recreation, his health soon deteriorated. As a result, in later years, Sachs had to use drugs to get up early in the morning and to fall asleep late in the night in order to fulfill his professional obligations as a research scientist and academic teacher. After several years of painful ill health, Julius von Sachs died on May 29, 1897 in Würzburg, four months before his 65th birthday. From the Handbuch to an Academic Textbook The Handbuch der Experimentale Physiologie der Pflanzen, Experimental Physiology of Plants, was published by Sachs in 1865 for specialists. Although it was rapidly sold out, the author decided not to publish a second edition. Instead, Sachs began to work on his Lehrbuch der Botanik, textbook of botany. The textbook of botany, structure and development. Due to its novelty and originality, the first edition of the Lehrbuch der Botanik was rapidly sold out. Within the subsequent five years, Julius Sachs published three expanded editions in 1870, 1873, and 1874. In addition to this enormous work, Sachs wrote another major book, his famous Geschichte der Botanik, History of Botany. Sachs decided not to publish further editions of his Lehrbuch. Instead, he focused on plant physiology and left the morphology and systematics of plants, as detailed in his textbook, to be taken over by his colleague, Carl von Gubel, who published a separate book on these topics. Sachs later produced his equally famous volume entitled Vorlesungen über Pflanzenphysiologie, Lectures about Plant Physiology. Selected Topics from the Lehrbuch, 1868. 1. Cells, Growth, and Tissue Tension. In Chapter 1 of the Lehrbuch, Sachs introduced the concept of the cell, with reference to a number of crop and ornamental plants. In one of his drawings, he illustrated root tissue isolated from a crown imperial. The process of vacuolization, followed by cell elongation and hence tissue expansion, was depicted for the very first time in any botanical text. 2. Chlorophyll bodies and their origin. Sachs concluded that the chlorophyll chrono, or chlorophyll bodies, are the sites of a similarity activity in the green leaves of plants. Three years later, Sachs described in great detail the morphology of chloroplasts based on his observations of the phyllids of the moss Fenaria hygrometrica. Moreover, he depicted the shape and number of starch grains per chloroplast, as well as documented the process of chloroplast division. Sachs reproduced his 1868 figure in his Vorlesungen and interpreted this example of organokinesis in the light of Darwinian evolution. He postulated that chlorophyll bodies represent independent microbes that inhabit the protoplasmic space of a host cell, wherein they multiply, one of the earliest hints at what we today call the endosymbiotic theory, which explains the evolutionary origin of chloroplasts and mitochondria as a result of a symbiotic relationship between a host cell and internalized symbiont. The Saxian view of the nature of chloroplasts is correct. 3. Turkish Wheat Development at the Microscopic Level Sachs invented novel methods for the analysis of biochemical changes within the embryo in germinating seeds. Figure 9 in the Lehrbuch shows a drawing of a cross-section through a germinating kernel of corn, or Turkish wheat. Sachs depicted the structure of the embryo in exquisite detail and provided an exact account of the scutellum and the starch grains that are degraded during the early phase of germination. 4. Germination and Fat Sugar Transformation Sachs studied seed germination in monocots, eudicots, and gymnosperms. Using histochemical staining techniques, he was able to document that during germination of castor bean seedlings, fat is transformed into carbohydrates. 
Later, the Saxion experimental system was used by the American plant physiologist Harry Weavers to elucidate the basic biochemistry of oil mobilization in the cotyledons of the same species. 5. Kara and Nutella as proto-embryophytes. In his Lehrbuch, Sachs described the Carophysian algae as water plants, reminiscent of algae but that show similarities in many ways to mosses. He viewed the genre Cara and Nutella as intermediate forms between the green algae and primitive land plants, particularly in light of his detailed descriptions of the changes occurring during the process of the biparental generation of progeny. 6. Sexual Reproduction and Darwinian Plant Evolution in his Lehrbuch, Sachs devoted Chapter 4 to the cellular basis of sexual reproduction. Sachs and Charles Darwin had something of a strained relationship during their later years as well-established scientists, as a consequence of conflicting interpretations of tropisms and Darwin's nearly Lamarckian theory of pangenesis. Sachs introduced the topic Entstehung der Pflanzenform and discussed variability in the context of Darwinian natural selection. He explicitly refers to Darwin's theory of descent with modification and hence introduced, arguably for the first time, Darwinian evolutionary thinking into a plant science textbook. Specifically, Sachs states that all green organisms descended from ancient ancestors and adapted over the course of numerous generations to their corresponding aquatic or terrestrial habitats. Summary 1. The year 2018 marks the 150th anniversary of the first publication of Julius Sachs' Lehrbuch de Botanik, which provided a comprehensive summary of what was then known about plant sciences. 2. By virtue of a reliance on detailed empirical observation and the rigorous application of chemical and physical principles, it is fair to say that this publication marked the beginning of what can be called modern-day plant science. Moreover, Sachs's Lehrbuch de Botanik prefigured the ascendance of plant molecular biology and the systems biology of photoautotropic organisms. 3. Regrettably, many of the insights of this great scientist have been forgotten by the generations who followed. It is only fitting, therefore, that the anniversary of the publication of the Lehrbuch de Botanik and the career of the father of plant physiology should be honored and reviewed. Sachs established the physiology of green organisms as an integral branch of botany. He incorporated sexual reproduction and a Darwinian perspective into plant biology.